cool tips for any music producer to try on their hats. Vocoder for open hats. So I just got done listening to this new track by Cloney <laughs> called Mofo. Uh, yeah, it does say the word in the song. Uh, but the idea is, is that this track has really unique drums, a lot of character. To some it might sound muddy, dirty. To others, it sounds good. There's two ways to get those kind of hats, but the first tip is the vocoder vibe. Now, the vocoder will usually be used on voices, as many of you guys know, and it usually sounds something like... I used to be a boy. Uh, however, you can still use it on other stuff. And one of the cool ways is to use it on your close hat or your open hat. We're going to have the noise controller here where we can kind of move X and Y. Uh, release. The frequencies I want to hit. I always like to see this as an EQ. From there, we need a beat. We can work as a team and put it at the 50% mark to do parallel. And then I told her that I just want to fuck, 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 fuck. The Redux. All right, so for this one, guys, utilizing Redux on the hats. Now, these might seem a little wild, but my whole point with this video was to show some tips that you haven't really heard before and that I've been hearing in a lot of house music. The idea is like a down sample. We're lowering the bit rates. Obviously, we're going to have to EQ that out, um, uh, the low end and maybe the vocal end. <laughs> I don't want to get uh, age restricted. Auto panning for them hats. So auto padding is the idea of utilizing an LFO for the lazy person and putting it on a pad and moving the closed hats left and right. So something like this. So the way we can add this is one, you can open up Ableton's auto pan audio effect or two, if you're utilizing MIDI, which you should, because I made a video on why you should, then what we could do is utilize an LFO that it has. We can use uh, multiple sources to do this, like a sign and vice versa. And then what we're going to do is route it to the pan here. We can go heavy if you want, and you can go halfway or just a tiny bit. From there, we're going to turn that retrig off so we don't keep resetting this. And then from there, slow it down or make it fast however you want. Now, this is the cleanest form to get close hats wide. I usually hate people that use the Haas because I call them GMO producers. Like, I like to be organic as F, you know? And what that means is that the width is created in a very organic way. And this is one way to kind of do it. You can also utilize this cool, um, I'm going to say sample and hold vibe on it. And then we can kind of go maybe there. respect the open hat. I always tell these people this story. I'm a professional sound designer and I managed to get my hands on the 909. And I started realizing that when I would hit the closed hat after the open hat, the open hat would shut off. And if I played the closed hat with the open hat at the same time, the open hat wouldn't open up. So I started thinking why would Roland do this? And I mentioned it in a video and some of you guys said, well, a real drummer wouldn't be able to do the same. He wouldn't be able to hit the open hat and the closed hat at the same time. You know, this is a drum machine that has pretty much shaped the sound of dance music and catapulted it forward. It's very um, iconic. So I was like, we need to learn from it. But one other thing I started realizing was when it comes to the mixing and the groove it's also really good to just do it out of habit as already if you think about it the open hat is taking up a certain frequency that the close hat is taking up as well so why would you want them hitting at the same time theory behind this is pretty simple you have your open hat hitting on the one third if you're making dance i'm pretty sure for the genres it might be genres it might be the same um so the idea is, is again it also minimizes it for you because you know that okay you know, I know that the open hat's hitting here, so I don't need the close hat hitting there. So when you start creating, let's say, like a groove around that. Okay, and then you have that. Now, let's say I put a close hat here, just at max volume, like most people would do. Then what happens to the mix is the question.
It sounds more balanced to me, but again, it could be Fugazi, it could be the McGurk effect. But another cool thing too is that I managed to watch a video of Black Phoenix on a community online where they explained how the open hat is the baby and it's gonna be the driving force of a track and they try not to put too much stuff in front of it. So again, close hat going in front, maybe you wanna process that open hat as good as you can and then respect the space that it has acquired. Add attack to your hats. Now this one is a super cool one if you're making chiller stuff, if you're making prog house, if you're making afro house, etc. If you've ever heard the open hat sound like a shaker or the close hat sound kind of smooth and shake it, shaker-ish, then you're not wrong. Uh, it could be a shaker, but at the same time, it could just be open hat and close hats that the producer has decided to add a bit of attack to smooth them out. Now the way you do this is simple. One, if you're using MIDI, all you have to do, assuming you're in Ableton simpler, is add attack to it. And you can find that right here. You get that and then it's lower than Now the cool thing about this is that you can also see it as a way of adding swing to a track because if we hear this now in the track versus it might be something fun to modulate as well. Swing is king now if you're making house music or funky music and you don't know swing then don't make the mistake and educate yourself on it but the idea of swing is the fact that when we have let's say our close hats here you can see that a lot of them in the 116 bar are landing on the grid now with swing the idea is that you're not going to land on the grid you're not you're going to have some velocity changes you're going to have some swing at it some humanization some flair some swag Okay, so that's how it's gonna sound like. Now, if I were to quantize it, doesn't sound too bad, but now what if I add a swing? So here I'm gonna add the swing logic 1660, that number on the right side that you see a lot when you're scrolling through your groove pull uh, selection, it's just the intensity of the swing. So we're gonna do that. Once you have your swing added, you're gonna notice there's this thing, this groove pull that pops up. Again, commit this. You can see that we do have a bit of change in velocities. While not that much, it does that a lot. And you can see that our 116 notes are shifting while our 1 and the 1.3 or the half 1 isn't. Velocity on the hats. I teach a lot of people. And last month I had a guy, we'll call him Mr. Dubai Man. He's probably going to text me and say, hey, I saw that video. But anyways, he came in with a Mark Knight track where we were trying to figure out pretty much the drum groove. And he was talking about how the open hat sounds like it's... So at first I thought, okay, let's check it out. And it first sounded kind of like pitch velocities, but eventually we found out that it was more of volume automation to the open hat, okay? Now this is super neat because this is something that I never did. Before I would just drop the open hat into the project and boom, 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 balls in, let's go. But now I, I take you know more control and love for it. So what I like to do to the open hat is, again, if you're utilizing MIDI, you have access to this LFO. I like to put it you know, on the volume. You can kind of hear, it's like, it sounds like the pitch is changing, but when the volume changes, it sort of gives that illusion. But it was something very cool. Now, you don't have to do it like this because this is very random, but what you can do is just mess with velocities here. For instance, what Mark Knight did was this, where he would have... Okay, and then maybe like this one can get higher, 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 and this one low. And then I kind of lost the bobbing head there because the open has da, da, da. So that's something cool that you can do. And again, you can do it with your close heads as well where you play with the velocities of them. But I find that most people know that it's the open hat that most of us just slam in and, and then, you know, we don't have no foreplay and stuff. Progress your hats. Progressions of the hats is very important. And it's probably one of the things that I also omitted until I started studying more of the new techno, business techno, as some of you purists might call it. Um, but the idea is, is that if when you have an open hat, obviously, let's say you start off very short. And then when it comes back in, the idea is to increase, again, maybe like the decay, uh, just progress. The 
The other thing to do is you can also start to add like maybe like a ride goes up. You see what I mean? Now, if you study a lot of your favorite artist tracks, I guarantee you they're doing some form of this, the good ones. Um, again, you don't have to go with a ride. You can go with a more released open hat. But again, it progress your drums, progress your hats. All right, guys, and those are going to be majority of my hat tips that I have for you guys. I'm sure there's a lot more. So if you have some, share them down in the comments. Don't be selfish. Now, if you want to support the channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find my sound design work. That is my sample pack label where I've been releasing for about, we can say, eight to nine years now. And I'm, again, super grateful for the support you guys give me. As always, best way to support. Other than that, you guys have a great rest of your day. Much love, and hopefully you found something that you could use in this video. Walking in space, that must be our vibe. You